So this intro might be a little bit long, so I'm going to put a, a link to the start of the gameplay in the description of this video. Um, so next up, something for the NES fans. And the game is uh, Dizzy the Adventurer. Aladdin Deck Enhancer and yep this is a NES game the Codemasters wanted to um, make games for the NES uh, they couldn't get a license apparently they did try to get a license um, at a trade show but Nintendo weren't interested in you know, just offering them out and this thing was an attempt at cutting the costs of making games for the NES and, well not making games, but um, buying games so the idea is part of the, uh, the selection of chips that's in every NES cartridge would be in this and the game ROM would be in this and there'd be a couple of different games uh, released separately. Part of the paperwork that comes with this does actually explain um, the, the purpose of it. Alright, so a quick look inside these. So this is a standard uh, NES cartridge. You can see there it's um, it's not even using up most of the case there, um, but you've got five different chips. So only one of those is the actual game ROM. Um, but with the Dizzy the Adventurer cart, oh god, look at that! That's all there is to it. So that must have been very cheap for them to make. And, uh, and the rest of it's up there. I forgot to say, there is a, a switch in there to change the region mode. Um, And then you just click the cartridge in place and you've got yourself something that's about the same size as a normal NIST cartridge. Let's uh, plug it in and play some Dizzy the Adventurer. There's that classic Codemasters logo. That is actually quite an ugly title screen. The colours seem to be a bit weird. But it's a nice nice little intro story. So yeah, they were able to add this to the game, even though it's a, a conversion of Dizzy Prince of the Oak Folk. Um, they've added quite a bit for the console. Because they don't have to worry about cramming the whole game into 64k. Yep, so our first puzzle.
You don't actually have a a life bar on this, do you? That's something that they took out, which I suppose you don't really need. So I suppose technically this is an unlicensed game. Um, and you would typically think an unlicensed game would be a bit crap. So I think a lot of people take a look at this game and sort of, I don't know, they, they sort of like to do a AVGN impression. But, I mean, even for a typical NES game, this looks quite nice. It is typical dizzy gameplay. It's something that if you don't like it, then you just don't like it. I think at this point, um, Codemasters were just about publishing their last few uh, Spectrum Amstrad games. Uh, they were getting ready to move on to consoles, but I think they were just a little bit late for the NES. I mean, this was 1993. The SNES was already out. He decided to go for the Mega Drive instead. I don't know if they made any SNES games. Did they release Micro Machines? I think they released Micro Machines for the SNES, actually. But Codemasters were one of the few companies to really make that transition to consoles. Not very many of them managed it. And of course this wasn't the only Aladdin Deck Enhancer game. There was, I think there was six released, and one of them was actually four games in one. It was Fantastic Dizzy, that was one of them, um, Big Nose the Caveman or something. What's he saying? Is he actually saying something there? Oh yeah, this bit. I actually find this boat a bit easier to get onto on this version. Although it's still very easy to fall in that water. You know, you have three lives, but there isn't really that many different ways to die. I mean, is falling in that lake is one of the only ways you can die in this. Because there were there were birds in the 8-bit home computer version of this.
Yeah, so you say um, you solve that puzzle and the music changes. There's some good music in this. It's funny really, one of the distinguishing features of Dizzy is his red boxing gloves and shoes. But on the Nez, they're not really that red, are they? They're kind of a purpley colour. And oh, there's Pogi. To find a way to catch him. I remember having a lot of trouble on Spellbound Dizzy. Um, I could find the net to catch Pogey on that one. Um, I had the flippers and everything, but I just couldn't get the net. It was really tricky. Um, eventually found out that you could just about swim fast enough to launch yourself out of the water. the life. I was trying to be cocky there. Oh, but it spawned me on the other side. They were actually working on a version of this for the Mega Drive. I don't know. I did see a video of it. Uh, the the unpublished ROM. Uh, there's a video of it on YouTube, and it looks actually it looks really really good. Um, but it was never in the end. It was never released. I think I was getting bored. <laughs> Alright, so there you go. That's a look at Dizzy the Adventurer. Thank you for watching.